All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we are planting some fig trees. And um, it, right now it's the fall. And I would argue, actually, this is probably the best time to be planting your fig trees, uh, really many fruit trees for probably most of us. Uh, the fall, I would, I would recommend, is really one of the best times to do this. Second best would be, obviously, the spring. And what I'm sort of doing right now is actually planting my trees in preparation for uh, the winter. So <clears throat> we have a, a system here that we've developed, which is a basically a very high dense system of planting fig trees where they're actually spaced two feet apart on center. We have three rows here um, and we're actually going to be, uh, you know, cut and covering them, which is another method of, uh, of winter protection where we cut them all back. We cover them with tarps. So this enables us to easily cover a, a large area and get these trees through the winter time. If you guys are in probably a, a colder zone seven or below, you're going to have to worry about that. Um, and then of course, in this system as, all, as well, we're also not only able to get them through the winter time, but we're also able to uh, grow them underneath low tunnels, which gives them a huge head start to the season, at least a month uh, head start to the season. So. This is really key for somebody like me in my climate, probably for somebody like you guys too, if you're willing to try it. But um, we're gonna look at planting these trees through that lens of growing them in this system. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you can't apply some of these principles to a normal planting where you have them maybe spaced 10, 15, 20 feet, even more uh, apart. You know, the principles are really the same about planting them. Um, spacing them, as I said, you can go from anywhere you want, from like 40 feet all the way down to, uh, I have them here two feet apart. And you could even maybe even plant them closer in a really, really dense system that might end up working out, um, depending on, you know, how, um, <clears throat> depending on how religious you are with actually training these shoots, the new shoots of the year and making sure that they get enough light penetration or enough light because um, you don't want anything shading each other out and that's kind of where the system can really lose some uh, some productivity. So that's what we're doing here is we just basically dug ourselves some holes. I, I actually stuck this one in the hole already and then this one here we actually have to put this one in the hole and something of note is that these are really large trees from um, 15 gallon size pots so the the root system is like 14 to 16 inches in height so it's really quite large and it's difficult to dig a hole um, to put something like that in the ground so uh, not only that but i would just recommend you plant smaller trees in general there's no real reason to plant larger trees like this it's more work there's not a whole lot of benefit if i plant like a, a you know a nice one gallon size pot i'll show you what I'm talking about real, real quick. If I were to plant this tree here, which this is on the list of planting today, you know, this is a four by nine pot and it's really well rooted in here. The growth above is actually really healthy. That's really key. If I have this and I plant this roughly at the same time as this, this 15 gallon size pot actually isn't going to be too much further ahead than this one gallon a couple years from now. You know, I would say maybe two years from now, this will almost be at the same vigor and um, probably have a similar root system to this tree, which is kind of insane. And it really goes to show that these smaller trees are really the way to go. And, um, you know, it's not like these bigger trees growing them out for a year is worth it. But if you can plant this in the ground versus having this in a pot, um, you're saving yourself time. You know, I think it's all about saving yourself time, honestly. And there's no real benefit to planting a large tree like this because let's say people do this actually in a very cold climate and they have an argument, there is a theory that if you plant larger trees in the ground, they're potentially more hardy than something like this. I would argue against that. I think that's actually false. I think it's the opposite. Um, you know, if you guys wanna actually um, do the tests yourself, the experiments yourself. I think the suckers actually from the base, the suckers from 
um, the tree down in the roots actually are more hardy than this older wood here. And eventually that, that suckering that keeps coming up every year gets hardier and hardier and adapts more and more to your climate. I think that the suckers are actually the way to go. And what we should do maybe even after the first year or two, because some people might argue, well, we're gonna plant a large tree like this. It's gonna have a nice canopy already. And we're just gonna stick that in the ground and we're gonna build from that canopy. That's not a bad idea. It's just that your tree is not really gonna be all that healthy, honestly. Um, and I would recommend that it, actually when you plant a tree, it doesn't matter what size it is, we're gonna cut it back to almost nothing. And you'll see that in this video, is that once we plant these, we get them situated in the, in the soil, we're actually gonna cut them back really, really hard. And I wouldn't just do this in this dense system here, because I have low tunnels over top of them. And that's really key is actually to keep them small so that in the spring we can put some uh, a season extension over them. But even if I wasn't doing this, I think it's a immensely beneficial idea. It's a, it's a topic and a thing that I like to talk about. It's called rejuvenation pruning. And that rejuvenation pruning process really sets up your tree for a really healthy start. Um, so that is, I think, really, really key, is getting yourself an established base that's really healthy. And over time, like I said, it actually will become uh, a hardier tree. So it's really quite <clears throat> something that I think is really worth mentioning in this. Now, another thing worth mentioning is actually the, the roots of the tree. So if uh, you have a really pot-bound tree and they're circling around and it's really thick roots, you want to untangle those roots and get them spread out because you don't want this tree choking itself out. Uh, that's a big recommendation, actually, I think by John Priest at uh, the USDA repository of the fig trees. So, you know, he's uh, obviously planted many, many fig trees and maintained many fig trees in the ground. And that's a really big one. You don't want them choking each other out because they, they have very vigorous, shallow root systems. And if they're in, intertangled with each other, I've noticed that actually with some of my potted trees as well. And I have a tree that's kind of choking itself out already. I have a couple that have died in the past. So if you got something that's really, really dense and thick and it's crisscrossing and it's really circling around, definitely tease the roots out. There's no negative to that with these especially these really large trees like this that may have been root bound for a very long time that's definitely a big plus now one of the other really key points here is actually in the soil uh is in the depth the depth of planting so this is a tree actually believe it or not that you're looking at that's grafted and because i live in zone seven and it gets to zero degrees Fahrenheit every year, this is really not a good idea. But because I'm able to efficiently protect these trees every year, uh, this is in all honesty, I think, a possibility. But normally I would not recommend planting a fig tree that's grafted in a, a climate that's, you know, below a zone eight. You know, if you're in a zone seven through four, it's just a horrible, horrible idea. But again, if you can get them through the winter time, whether that's wrapping or the cut and cover method or some other method this is really really uh something that you can do although yeah not a huge recommendation um so you know th knowing that this tree actually has growth that's starting right here and i'm going to cut all these trees back to six to twelve inches so this tree actually has a large amount of its trunk sticking up out of the soil and it's going to be more difficult to protect this tree in the wintertime, especially this graft union. So what I'm thinking about actually, now that I've been just thinking about it right now on camera, I'm actually, I think I'm going to take this one out of the ground, dig a deeper hole and get this thing in the ground at a deeper depth. And the depth is really key because for this particular situation, it's extremely key. But unfortunately, um, what I really would prefer in a climate like mine, you know, in places that really in all honesty, you do this even in California, I would argue if you have irrigation and uh, you also live, let's say you live in a, a humid place that gets quite a bit of rain every year. Let's say you average over 30 ish inches of rain every year, somewhere around 30 inches. And you also live 
let's say in a colder place, a shorter season place, or you have means of irrigating, you can easily irrigate. I would recommend actually planting them in a one to two foot high berm, a one to two foot high mound, and plant the tree in that mound so that most of the root system is actually above grade. And I would recommend this for everybody. I don't even care if you're in zone four. Um, plant your tree higher up because what that's going to really enable you to do is get those warmer soil temperatures earlier in the spring. The metabolic rate of these trees is going to be more active at that time and it's just an exponential amount of growth. It's an exponential amount of productivity that's then increased because you had warmer soil temperatures. Now if I do the opposite, what some people recommend is actually in very cold places is to plant your tree maybe even two to three feet deep well, you're going to have very cold soils um, in the spring and your tree is going to really struggle to wake up. It's going to take a month. It would take me an entire month after frost for some of these trees to wake up, get their act together. Um, and then they would be, be very metabolically slow. And again, that's an exponential decrease in productivity and vigor, overall health of the tree, everything. So we don't want to do that. I would highly advise against that. Now you can do that in, in soils that are very dry. Let's say you live in the desert. Um, maybe you're in Southern California where it's extremely dry. You don't have means of irrigation. Um, I would actually advise taking the root ball of this tree, whatever it is, and growing out the stem to about five feet or more. And then planting this entire root ball and the stem so that the entirety of this is five feet underground. Um, if you plant this thing five feet underground, you're going to have a lot less issues with irrigation and water. It's also along the stem, it's going to basically root itself along the stem like a tomato plant, a pepper plant, many plants where you just can bend over the stem and cover them with soil. These guys will actually put out roots along every single bud, every single node and you'll have a huge tree in a very short time because you guys have a long season, probably a, uh, a much warmer soil than I do here. And that would be highly, highly recommended is to actually plant this thing five feet deep. In fact, Montserrat Ponds in Spain does that. And essentially you just leave a little piece of it above grade, above the ground. But if you can fit as much of this below grade in those climates, I would highly recommend it. And it's going to take a lot more work to dig a tree to dig a hole that deep, but it's worth it in the end. And it'll really pay off um, because the fig tree will get those roots nice and deep, have access to more water. And then as the tree actually gets older, it likes to put out more shallow roots. And you'll end up having um, kind of the bonus, the benefit of both is having more deeper roots and having a, a huge, um, you know, basically a huge canopy of roots at a more shallow depth. Um, so that's really, I think, my big recommendation is for those climates. Now, the last point on the, the depth of the planting here, because I could just do a whole podcast episode on just the depth of these things, but it's really, I think, important for you guys in these very cold places not to do the two to three foot planting depth. I've done that for years. It's a huge waste of time. You end up having to wait three or four or five years depending on how deep you planted it, uh, for your tree to really get its act together. And some of these figs here that I plant one year in the ground or even in the second year, they're extremely, extremely productive. So if you're gonna be waiting three to five, and it's more on the four to five, I would argue, for your tree to really get established because what happens in these colder places when you plant them so deep, the soil is just too cold. Um, and then you end up having an issue where the metabolism of the tree doesn't do a whole lot for the entirety of the year and it's just very slow to get established. It's slow to wake up, um, it's slow to put out more roots, it's slow to grow because the metabolism is lower. So it's all about these soil temperatures guys. It's a huge part of growing figs is getting the right soil temperature. We want them somewhere between 70 and 80. Ideally 78 is the most ideal soil temperature. So if you're struggling at different times of the year like maybe in your spring or in your fall, to reach 78 degrees, this would be extremely, extremely key is to mess with the soil um, planting depth. 
And I, th I would argue for the large, overwhelming majority of us, I would say 90% of us, it's probably much more beneficial to plant the thing above grade. Even just a portion of it above grade, uh, a portion of the root system above grade. Now, if you're in a very, very cold place like zone four, and I know there's gonna be some of you guys out there are gonna say, well, Ross, if I planted a, a foot above grade, it's gonna die, you know? Well, here in zone seven, it didn't. In fact, I have some behind you in raised beds that I've planted actually in the past. We did experiments on them. You can go back and see what the results were here when temperatures reached zero degrees, two degrees. We did this multiple years. And as long as you insulate the soil, you're good. You wanna keep the soil above 15 degrees Fahrenheit uh, because the roots of these trees will start to take damage around 15 degrees. Now, what you can do if you're real smart is actually plant part a portion of the bark below grade. So the root ball is above grade, or at least a portion of the root ball is above grade, getting those higher soil temperatures, but you're still, it, because it's in such a high mound, you're covering the base of the tree, which is allowing that if it does get really cold and the top dies back, at least the, uh, the tree can come back from right below the soil. And you would probably want about four inches of soil covering the stem so that you can ensure that there's gonna be some buds that survive and it comes back year after year. Uh, another common question I get, another common thing is like, oh my God, Ross, look how close the trees are to your house, you know? Um, not an issue because fig trees put out mostly shallow roots and I've, I've known quite a, bit of, quite a bit of people that have trees that are much older than these right up against their house in every climate you can think of. John Verdict, as an example, has a tree, a vista, a Villa de Bordeaux, that's actually 20 feet tall. So, you know, you can make an argument that fig trees obviously have a very aggressive root system, but most of it's shallow. You know, they're not gonna get usually too far deep that's going to mess with the a foundation. And until John Verdict has a 20 year old tree right up against this house, I mean, until he has a problem, I don't have a problem. And most of the people who, who kind of tell these crazy tales, they're tales. I haven't actually seen photographic evidence of anyone's tree that uh, has destroyed their foundation. So, you know, I would highly recommend, I know, t I know at least 20 people who have trees right up against their house that are extremely old. And it's extremely beneficial to have trees right up against your house. So I'm gonna plant this one here. And this one actually is about the height that I want it at above grade. Um, grade is actually, this one maybe is about six inches above grade. And I have a lot of trees to plant today, so I could spend all day doing this, which I probably will. And I don't really wanna be digging so many holes to get all these trees above grade at the extent that I want them. However, in the future, what I will do, because it, it isn't really all that difficult in the future, is actually just to get myself, when I plant these things, you know, some kind of machinery that's gonna create a berm for myself, make this a whole lot easier to plant them at the depth that I want. And that's usually what you'll see in commercial plantings, obviously, is the aid of uh, machinery. But this guy is really quite, quite high up and we're just gonna cover the root ball with soil. I'm not even gonna water these guys in. It's the fall, they don't have any leaves on them. They're almost basically dormant at this point. The soil is actually quite moist as it is. It's gonna rain because we're getting a hurricane, Hurricane Ida or Etta or something's coming in on Wednesday or something. So, you know, we're getting like over two inches of rain in the next few days so I got to plant this thing get all these trees planted now and that's really a good time before rain to plant these things right and uh, so we covered it we'll do a little bit better of a job later in this video but the next point I want to make as I said is like I'm gonna cut these trees way back because what I really want this tree to do is actually put out some suckers next year I wanted to put up some suckers from the roots. Um, 
you know, I want this tree to really um, rejuvenate itself, have that rejuvenation process happen. So I'm going to cut this thing way back. I'm going to cut this thing back to like here. And this is really quite extreme. Some people would probably argue, but this is the way to go. So I just cut off probably two and a half, three feet of growth. I'm left with a little stump here that has some buds just in case if let's say it doesn't actually send up some roots or some suckers from the roots there is something down here that will actually send up something and and ideally what i want in this system anyway is for four suckers to come up those will get themselves established like some of these other trees and we can then from that point um, just keep coming back to those four suckers every year um, sort of like a cordon system so that I think here guys is the video. That's really what I wanted to mention. Um, there's a lot that kind of go, oh wait, you know, we could talk about the soil real quick. In that, you know, fig trees like a more well-draining soil, I would argue. It's really all in that water. You know, if you have a really heavy soil with a lot of rain, it's tough on these fig trees, especially on the fruit quality. They have, um, you know, pretty weak root systems to start that are very susceptible to root rot. So if you have a lot of standing water, horrible, horrible idea. Another great reason actually to plant them above grade in mounds is it really aids with that drainage that we desperately, desperately need. So that's a huge recommendation right there that's often overlooked. Um, but really the soil type doesn't necessarily matter all that much. They're really well adapted to all different types of soil. And I would argue, you know, give yourself a little bit of organic material, right? You want to have a balance of nutrients, obviously. You want to cover all the micronutrients. You don't want to have something that's completely devoid of nutrients, but because you do want your tree to grow every year, that's really key for these trees. But this is a more of a desert-like tree. You know, this is, think of them like a cactus. And, um, you know, that's sort of the environment that they can grow in and will grow in if you allow them. So. In all honesty, probably something, a really warm clay soil with some good organic material mixed in there is probably the way to go. Um, if it's in sand, you may want to add a lot of material because you may have an issue with root knot nematodes. And the root knot nematodes can really be destructive on these uh, fig trees and ficus carica. So if you're in Florida, highly recommend you get yourself LSU purple graft onto LSU purple. That's your rootstock. Um, also put down tons of organic material on top of the soil. You may even want to plant the, the, uh, the tree quite deep below the nematode level. Um, you may want to plant it higher above the nematode layer. You know, there's a whole different debate on this whole thing, but um, that's really key. And then if you're just in a sandier place, like at the beach, you know, my parents have a place at the beach uh, in Jersey and you know, it, uh, it's really, really all sand there. So what I would recommend is just putting down a lot of material, a lot of organic material on top of the soil every year to get that tree established. Uh, once it gets itself established, then you're good. You may not have to put every, put a whole lot of material down, but some sand is really just super well draining and it's not like the fig tree will um, not like that, but it just won't grow all that much. Water is the really the main driver of growth in these trees. So if you need, you desperately need your tree to grow for whatever reason, which in most situations we really don't. Usually these trees grow too quickly, especially in this heavy clay I have. You actually would probably want less water. And um, yeah, so it's kind of a balancing act there, guys. And I hope you guys learned something. I know we didn't do a whole lot of actual planting, but these are really the most important things I think you all need to know um, when doing this for yourself at home. So take care, guys. All right. We'll see you for the next one. Hit that subscribe button for me if you got this far. And uh, check us out on our blog, figboss.com. We have all kinds of awesome fig-related information there. See you guys soon. Take care.